Good morning, this is Mike Burris with Spirit Music Meetups, and we're continuing in this part four of abiding or remaining staying in the life of Christ. Just looking at some notes that I had made, and one of those notes re regarded this Logos of God that we see in John 15. So we're back to, you are already clean by reason of the Logos message. That's verse 3. You are already clean. He's talking to the 11 disciples. Judas had already left. Judas was not clean. He had impure motives. He had impurities in him. And one of those was he was stealing money out of the bag all the time. And he went to go get 30 pieces of silver to betray Jesus because he wanted... He was a zealot, so he wanted somebody who was going to kill the Romans. And Jesus was saying, love your enemies. This is, this is too radical. Already you are clean by or through the realizing channel, dia, of the, the, the specific Logos message that I have already perfect tense, with lasting effects, spoken to you. This is rhema word that he had spoken to them previously. So the rhema word cleansed them. It's really the rhema word that cleansed them. But there is power in the gospel message. That's what logos means in, in John and almost all throughout the New Testament. Whereas Logos' message of God, the communication of God, was the scripture written down through Moses in the Old Covenant. The Old Covenant and New Covenant are absolutely nothing like each other by definition in all the places to talk about the New Covenant. So let's look at this Logos. John 8.38 If you abide in my Logos, it will set you free. Dwell on Logos' message, that's the gospel message, for Logos Christ to dwell in me, to set me free. This is something the Lord was showing me. Logos really is one thing. In the New Testament, and it's Christ. So John starts out with that. The Logos message of God, the communication of God, is now not scriptural writings, but... Jesus Christ and what he said about himself he preached what he said it wasn't written and we talked about that he never had anybody write anything down he never said write this down every rabbi had scribes and the uh, disciples would then read those writings and debate those writings off the side but he wanted them just with him all the time listening to him so let's look at John 8, 38, just briefly. I'm back in that tool that I will probably mention in this description. So let's look at John 8 in the Biblio uh, Bible Hub, Bible Hub interlinear, because it has a good jumping off point. So we're going to go down for all your okay so I'm reading from the interlinear therefore Jesus was saying to the ones having believed in him and these are Jews it, it says if you abide if you meno there's that word again remaining or stay that was from John 15 4 and following, if you abide or stay connected or dwell, here it says, in the word, logos, that is the one of mine, right? So he's not talking about Moses. He's not talking about the Old Testament prophets. He's not talking about anything the rabbis wrote. He's, or, or spoke, but message usually is uh, communication after the fact of speaking. So if you abide in the word of mine, the message, 
And this in context, you can see, is all about what Jesus was saying to these Jews that have now believed in him. So if you go, it's all, your words are defined by context. So you have to go back and see what Jesus was saying to them, these Jews. And usually you don't have to go very far back. Just look at the immediate context. It says, these things of his speaking, this is verse 30, so we're at 830 now. These things of his speaking, many believed in him. So these things he was speaking. So he's preaching his message. He's not writing his message. He's not having them read his message. This is very unique, right? In the New Covenant, it's all about preaching the message and people listening to the message. But in the Old Testament, you have everything written down. And there's a lot, a lot lost in translation when you write things down and pass them down. So let's look at verse 29. This is the way I look at context, always going backwards. What are these things that he was speaking that many believed, many put their faith, their trust, reliance, and dependence upon reaching him, ice, reaching him. And they, having believed in Jews, okay. So he's talking to these Jews that just believed in him. Verse 29, And the one having sent me, with me, is not, absolutely. Okay, he says, And the one having sent me, is with me. That's Jesus saying, The one that has sent me, is, is with me. Presently and ongoingly. He has absolutely not left me alone because I, the, the things pleasing to him, do always. In other words, but because I, the things pleasing to him, presently, ongoingly do perform always. So he's really saying, hey, I'm not speaking on my own authority. And, and the Father is with me. So 28, let's look at that. So he's really associating himself with God the Father. He's saying, he's with me. 28, therefore, to them, he's, Jesus said, when you shall have lifted up, I wrote, okay, when you have lifted up, you know, we saw in Ephesians uh not Ephesians. We saw, we saw in John 15. We already saw in John 15. This is this is a little earlier. So if, remember, words are defined by context. We saw in John 15 that Jesus talks verse two about he lifts up Iro. He lifts up vines not throws them away i'm sorry he lifts up branches which are christians in the context he doesn't throw them away he lifts them up to a higher wire on the trellis so it gets more light and so it would get more fruit he's talking about fruit he's not going to throw those that don't have fruit away what 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 vine, what vine dresser what Gardener does that. I, I have lots of vines. I don't. I don't just cut branches off that don't have fruit. I'm trying to produce fruit. I'm going to get them up closer to the sun. That's where the blooms happen. That's where the bees happen. And that's this is called the birds and the bees. In this case, the bees. So here in verse eight, he uses a different word for lift up. Hoop so. Let's see what that means to raise up, to exalt. So it's really referring to exalt, raised up, exalted. But it's definitely a reference to Jesus being lifted up on the cross, raised up and exalted. Yeah, I wonder if that comes from Hoopso, if it comes from other 
parts other words, wouldn't that be something? Hoopso to elevate. See Greek hoop sauce. So let's see. Sometimes the derivation is from the noun. It means high or lift lifted up. Heavenly. Dignity. Eminence. Height. And it comes from high rank. So it's really is a derivative of hyper, hooper, like hyper, hyper, you know, you call it hyper, big uh, hooper. So it's elevation, altitude, sky, lifted up high. So this is a reference, you know, definitely Jesus is using this word because they're going to put him up on a cross. They're going to put him up into the sky, you know. So he uses this word to get that meaning across. He's going to be elevated. He's going to be exalted. But they put him on a cross to do this. <laughs> Isn't that something? That's a play on words. So you can learn a lot from the original language and what Jesus is using in word pictures. You know, Greek and Hebrew, like every language, has pictures associated to it. So... Jesus is saying, you shall have lifted up the Son of Man, then you will know that I am, there it is, I, you know, ongoingly exist. I ongoingly exist. Wow, this is the great I am. This is, Jesus is saying, I am the Father. This is, this is like saying, Yahweh, I am. And that's the end of that sentence. <laughs> oh my gosh. I am He, and connected from this, from myself I do nothing, but as the Father has taught me, these things I speak. So He's talking about His gospel message about Himself, that He is the I Am. <laughs> I am He, <laughs> and it's the Father that is telling me this, and I speak the things the Father has told me, and that's... Verse 28, 27 says they did not understand he was speaking about the Father. So he's talking about all through here that I am the Messiah. I am he. I am the true one. Let's look at verse 26. Many things I have concerning to say to you and to judge Wow, who can judge but God alone? But the one having sent me is truthful. Uh, he is true. All, the adjective of truth. Alethe, the absolute reality. Well, he says in John 14, 6, later on, he says, I am the truth. <laughs> I am the truth. And here in John 15, 1, he says, I am the vine. The true vine. The truth. The absolute reality. So, you know, Jesus is, uses this word truth a lot about himself and about the Father. And here he says, you know, I am sent from the Father. And what I have heard from him, these things I say, I speak, I utter unto, into the world, unto reaching the world. And they did not understand that he was speaking about the Father. So, let's go back a little bit further. They were saying, therefore, to him, Who are you? <laughs> See, it's all about who Jesus is. <laughs> That's the message. That's the Logos message. Who am I? They wanted to know, who, who are you? And he's saying, I am. I am. <laughs> That's Jehovah. No wonder they blasphemy, right? Blasphemy. That's what they said, blasphemy. Verse 24, see how I work backwards. I took a lot of classes on hermeneutics. I said, therefore, to you that you will die in your sins. If for not, if in any possibility you do not believe, you do not trust and rely that I am, there it is. He just says that I am. He's really nailing him with this. 
if you don't, you will die in your sins. He reiterates. He is the I am. <laughs> He's saying this, I am. And I, the, he, the Father, is telling me this. Now let's go back to verse 23. And he was saying to them, You are from below. You are from below. But I am from above. I am. <laughs> he says, I from the above am present ongoingly. What? How can you be presently ongoingly from above? You are of this world. I absolutely am not <laughs> of this world. Oh my. So, so you see, it's all about himself. This is all about himself and that he has the ability to forgive sins because he is the I am and so that is the context that is the logos message in verse 31 therefore Jesus the ones that trusted and believed in him see it's all about him these Jews he says but if you abide in the message, the gospel message. Now we know what the gospel message was. He just spoke to them, right? Which is all about who he is. Then, really, you can say, you are presently, ongoingly, my truly, true, there's that ad, 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 adverb, you are truly, it's an adverb this time, truly, in reality, my disciples. You are really, really my disciples. See, absolute reality. This is absolutely real. You are my followers, my disciples, my pupils. See, they had rabbis, they knew what that meant. Verse 32, and connected to this, not a separate idea, they, it's not a separate sentence. You can't, you can't do this. And that's what, what they did, is they made this a separate sentence, a, a separate verse. It's not. It's coupled to it. It's related to it. And you all, second person plural, in the future, it's future, it's not now, actually, indicative, you actually will know within, it's in the middle, so it's within, you will know within, and the word there for know is gnosko, which means you will experience Right? Through your senses, through within. The truth, the specific truth. He's talking about truly, he used truly as an adverb. Now he's talking about you will specifically know the specific truth. And, he's, and, and that's the end of that sentence. phrase. It's that end of the phrase, not a sentence. And coupled to this, right? Now we have. When you have multiple ands, the first and is usually a coupler, and the second and is like an and also, and coupled also to this, right? And coupled also to this, right? Or subsequently, really, it usually means and consequently, and thus, the truth. So first of all, you've got to... You've got to abide in the message to be his true disciples. And coupled to this, and coupled to this, you will know the truth. You can say, and then you will know the truth. You've got to do one thing. There's an if. It's, it's subjunctive. If. He's talking about a hypothetical. And he's talking to the, the Jews who had just put their faith in him. They just heard his message. And they just put his, their faith in him. And he's saying, stay with it. Stay in it. In. Stay in the message. Now, how do you stay in the message? Well, that word in, that preposition in, could be in, by, or with. So, it can mean inside. Well, how do you stay inside the message? That, that doesn't really make sense. So sometimes translations don't really make sense. So you got to understand Greek. You can connect on it. So you don't have to memorize these things. You can just connect on, on uh, 
the Bible Hub. Okay? So, it means in, by, or with. So, in the location of, inside the, the message. It's kind of hard to do that. So, what's the by? By means usually by the side of, but a lot of times it's really by the means of, really. By the means of. If you remain or stay connected by the means of the message. Now that makes sense. Stay connected to what? To Jesus. We see that he's saying, stay with me. Stay connected with me. Now, that you can, you can, uh, that's what I, because later on it's all about abiding in the vine. You know, we know that from John 15. Abiding in the vine is staying connected to Jesus. The vine is Jesus, the true vine. But here they might be scratching their head and abide in the word. It's probably by the means, abide by the means of the word. Stay, stay with me. You know, he's, they are with him right now. And he just spoke to them, and he's saying, hey, I want you to stay with me. You know, rab disciples, they travel with their rabbi. They stay with the rabbi. And he just said that. You will truly be my disciples if you stay <laughs> with me. It makes sense, right? I mean, you know, pupils have to stay with their teacher. Stick with me. If you stick with my message, not a rap, some other rabbi's message, you're going to be my, he really, the emphasis is my disciples, not some other rabbi, not John the Baptist's, or some other, you know, rabbi, Jewish rabbi. So I think this is pretty self-explanatory to them. They, they know what following somebody is, being a disciple, and that you got to stick with them. And you got to stick with their message. John the Baptist had a message. Uh, Jesus is the Lamb of God. I'm preparing the way for him. Repent. Be ready for that. The axe is at the root of the tree. So it could be uh, the preposition mean uh, with the company of. So some people say by or with, but it's really with, with the company of, with the company of. So if you abide with the company of, who? <laughs> Me, I'm talking with you. You know, if you stay in fellowship with me, if you stick with me, hang out with me, uh, right? Abide with the company of the message. So you got to hang out with the, the company of the message. That's me and all the people following the message. Okay, so you can, there's really the Lord told me when it comes to a person. In, by, and with all are true. He showed me that in a dream, I believe. But uh, here, you know, I think everybody knows you have to abide with the, the teacher, the rabbi. You got to hang, you got to stay, you got to dwell, you got to uh, dwell with and stay with, connected to the teacher, to be that disciple of that teacher. And Jesus is saying that. And so you got to hang out with the gospel message. You got to stick with the gospel message. And then, okay, verse 32, and then you will personally experience within you, that's that word, in the future sometime, the truth. So he's giving them a promise. The truth, it turns out, is Jesus. We know that. He is the absolute reality. He's just talking about the Father. And how he represents the Father. He speaks for the Father. I'm going to represent, and I'm the absolute truth of the Father. And, here's another and, the truth, and consequently, right? And subsequently, and as a result, the truth, that's Jesus, the absolute reality. He's talking about himself. That's the gospel message. That's what John says. You know, the Logos became flesh. He was God. He was with God. And he dwelt among us. He became flesh. That's the message. Jesus is the message of God. The Logos. Not scripture. A person is. 
and the preaching of Jesus about himself being one with the Father. And the truth will set you free. These Jews, they answered unto him, We are the seed, the sperma, literally sperm. We are the seed of Abraham. They were the physical seed of Abraham. And coupled to this, and coupled to this, and related to this, we have never, not at all, absolutely in no way, been bondage, under bondage. What a lie. <laughs> Remember, they came out of Exodus. They were seriously under bondage. Uh, they were slaves. And so that's, that's the word, 1398, you can see, that's dulo, comes from slaves. So they, they were never slaves. Oh, yes, you were. So they, they have short-term memory, in this case, long-term memory. But they were now under bondage to the Romans. So, wow, man, they're, they're really puffed up with pride here. <laughs> we're, we're never been under bondage. Yeah, you are. You're under the Romans right now. How can you say you, you know, you, us all, will become free, right? That word free is powerful, 1658. And you can click on 1658, 1659. 1658 means liberated, uh, delivered from bondage, delivered from obligation, set free from being a slave, and unshackled. Wow. And this word's a lot, used a lot. And Jesus is saying, you know, you're going to be unshackled from bondage, being a slave. And they, and Jesus answered them, truly, truly, amen, amen, so be it, so be it. That's where we get amen, so be it. This is the truth I speak. I, and he says it twice. This is super emphasis. I say to you that everyone practicing sin, this is just the word do or doing sin, but it's in the present participle, which means routinely as a lifestyle, as a habit. Those who are routinely practicing sin as a lifestyle, Practicing the sin. And so he's not talking about any old sin. He's talking about some specific sin. So I would go look back in context and for the word sin, harmatia, that means missing the mark, missing the target of God. Missing the target completely. And he's talking about sin. What sin? Every time you see a definite article, you should say, What sin? Go look for what he's talking. A slave of this sin, he is presently and ongoingly. So he wants, he talks about in verse 35, that a slave that lives or abides in the house, he's talking about physical things, uh, is a slave, a slave in this age, okay, he's talking about the stuff that they know about, right? A slave does not, does not abide, okay, absolutely does not dwell ongoingly, he says, in the house. What house is he talking about? I think he's very clearly talking about the house of God in this age. The son, however, does presently and ongoingly abide, all right? So... Jesus is the Son. He's trying to tell them that. If therefore the Son sets you free, you will indeed really, 3689, indeed, truly, actually, really, you will really, actually be set free. And he's, he uses that future indicative mode again. He's talking about the same truth that will set you free. He's using the same future indicative middle. will set you free from within. All right. So 
you always have to look at how words are defined in context. So verse, the truth, the truth that sets you free here in verse 36 is the son. And that's what we see. Jesus comes right out and says this in John 14, 6, a little further down. He says, I am the truth, <laughs> right? I am the truth. And he's already implied, you know, hinting at this. I am the truth. I am the son that will set you free from within sometime in the future. And that was verse 35, 36. If therefore the son sets you free, indeed, you will, in the future, be set free. So if, if, if the hypothetical situation, he's talking to these Jews that just believed in his message, if the Son sets you free, from what? He's talking of not a freedom from Romans, that's what they were hoping, <laughs> under bondage, right? Before, they were under bondage to Egypt, but really, he's talking about the message is bondage to the habitual life of sin. And we all have that. You know, we don't, we have blinders. You know, on my, my truck is so big that sometimes I can't see a, a vehicle. So there's special mirrors to see really concave mirrors because somebody could be in my blind spot. But we all walk through life with with blinders on and people are always telling us and we get in arguments because we don't see our blind spots but they do what is going on here so sorry about this I can't stand it being crooked slanted so I'm gonna wrap this up we can't see that we are habitually see they didn't they said we're not under bondage to anybody they were blind too they were in bondage to the the romans and jesus is really nailing them hey man you're you're everybody i say to you that everyone every single one the whole of everyone pass the entire world he says in some places is bound to sin Truly, truly, I say to you that every one of you, and he's talking about singularly, he's picking on them singularly. So you won't see this in, in English, but he's talking to everyone. He's pointing to every one of them. <laughs> wow, I wish I had been there. He's like you, everyone that is routinely, as a lifestyle, practicing the sin. Boy, I would love to sin. You know, what's he talking about? The sin. We could do a whole looking in context for what the sin is referring to. The trespass. A slave. Doulos. Presently and ongoingly, you are this of the sin. Of the sin. There it is again. The sin. And... If you're a slave, you will not abide in the house of the Lord. Just will not. Just like their, their slaves lived outside of the house. They didn't live in the house. Unless you were a bond servant and you were, it's a different thing. But slaves, the Egyptian slaves that were serving the, the Gentiles, you know, they were not allowed in the house. You couldn't, you couldn't be in the company living, having dinner or anything with Gentiles. That was against the law, against the law of God. So he was talking to people who knew what this meant. He goes, you know that if you're a slave, you don't live in the house, but you want to live in the house of God. But the son lives in the house of God. I am the son. And therefore, if the Son, right, sets you free, so now you're no longer a slave, then you can live in the house of God. But if you are not set free by the owner 
owner's son of the house, if you're not set free from being a slave to this world and the sin of this world, then you cannot live in the house. You cannot dwell. Here's the word abide, meaning dwell. You cannot live with the family. You cannot live with God the Father. You cannot live with Jesus. You cannot live in the, in the house. And he wants them to live in the house. And so he's telling them, you know, go down this path. What is the path to remain connected, dwell, in by or with the message of mine, not somebody else's, not Moses. That's really stressed in the book of John. Not scripture, not the, not the previous Elijah. Everybody's talking about Elijah a lot. You know, Isaiah, you know, Elisha, or Micah, all Zechariah. No, no. That's what the rabbis did. They were so connected to the messages of Moses and all the previous prophets, even though they killed all the prophets. And so many of the Jews rebelled against Moses. So you can't do this. You can't be like the other rabbis. You have to be connected to the message of Jesus Christ about himself, who he was. you got to stay connected to that. So that's very important in to be a disciple of Christ. You can't take on other people's messages. You can't be connected to their messages. Moses, you can't be connected to Moses and Jesus at the same time. But there are parts where Moses talked about Jesus that would come, the prophet. And, he's, and even Moses said, look, if you don't listen to him, not me, he didn't say, listen to me and him. He said, if you don't listen to everything the prophet says, you will be cut off from God's people. Very stern warning and he says he's coming after me and he's a Jew just like us and you must listen to him or you will be cut off from God's people so it's a very stern warning that Moses's message was temporary it was going to be replaced by the prophet and they didn't even really bother to see if Jesus was the prophet and he says if you do this if you stay connected to the gospel message then that's that connecting word. And then you will know the truth. And we find out the truth is the Son. See, the message is all about the Son. It's not about the Son's teachings, uh, it, uh, you know, about morality or all these things, about how to live in the kingdom. It, the message of the Son is about the Son. <laughs> The teachings of the Son are another thing. The sayings of the Son is another thing. But he taught a lot about himself. That's the gospel message in context. We can't read anything else into it. Please don't read anything else into it. Go with the flow of the argument. What is being said? What is Jesus saying? What is John writing? And you will personally experience the truth and the truth we know is jesus in context and he says it i am the truth and the truth will in the future actually set you free and liberate you from that slavery to the practice of sin we could do a whole thing on that alone that's an incredible promise we all want to be set free from the practice, the lifestyle, the slavery, have, feeling like you have to do this. You, you're compelled to do this. I can't not, not do this. I'm being told to do this. And I can't seem to say no to missing the mark of God's holiness, missing the target of God's... We're not even hitting the target. <laughs> Forget the bullseye. We're not even hitting the target. <laughs> at all, when the arrow is going right past it, when we are a slave to sin. So we want to be set free, then let's work backwards. We want to be set free by the truth, and that is the Son. Then we need to personally experience. This is not head knowledge. This is not Bible reading. This is total interaction with 
the truth, and it's from within. It's in the middle. It's in the middle voice, not the passive. It's not done to you. It's not active. It's not something you do. You go out and, you know, learn the truth, stuff your head with knowledge. This is something done within you by the truth, who is Jesus. This is, this is something that's done within us by the truth. It's very similar to the passive, but it's, it's reflexive. It's within, okay? It's back on you. And by the truth, the truth is coming back on to you. What truth? How, how, what? He says, you will know, personally experience the truth. And how do we do this? If we are going, if you've got to go work backwards. We have to be a disciple, a true follower, a, few, a, a true pupil, a true um, sitting under the feet of Jesus. Him, not Paul, not Peter, not John, not anybody, but him. And then working backwards, we, how do we do that? We must abide, remain, stay connected to the gospel message, the message about Jesus Christ. So we need to stay focused on that. We need to stay connected. We cannot leave it. We cannot add something else to it. We can't depart from it. We must stay with it. We must tarry. We must sojourn. We must dwell with the company of the gospel message. We must dwell with the company of the gospel message. We must dwell inside it. We must get into it. We must get inside the gospel message. And the gospel message is Jesus. We must get inside Jesus. <laughs> yeah, that's what in Christ means. We must get in the gospel message. The gospel message is Jesus. He is the Logos. John 1.1. 1, 1. And, so and the whole message is about himself. So we must get in the Son. You see how we have to do this? We have to get into the Son. And that's what he's going to say in John 15 about getting into the vine. We must get inside the vine. We must, must be connected into the vine, the true vine, the truth about God. He is the truth. Wow, what a powerful unlocking. See how important this is? You have to look at how all the way through the book of John, in this case, how is the word... Logos, the Logos, not some general message, but a specific message. How is that being used? It's Jesus Christ and who he said he was, who he said he was. And we must abide in that message. We must abide in Jesus is the message of God, right? We must abide in the message of God, and that's Jesus Christ. He said this is who I am. I am that I am. And that's why they said blasphemy. He's saying that he's the same as God. And he proved he was the same as God. And we have to get into this teacher. Not Paul, not Peter, not Jude, not John, not Luke. Luke wasn't even an apostle, not Mark. You know, it goes down the line. We just get into Bible writings, but we have to get into Jesus that the New Testament was simply a testimony of people who met him personally or didn't. Luke didn't even meet him personally. And he wrote two books that we're reading. It's really just history. Uh, eyewitness accounts. He goes around and he talks with eyewitnesses because he's trying to prove to Theophilus, probably a senator, a Roman senator, somebody really important, that he wrote two books to try to convince him that Jesus was the way. And maybe because he was a very influential senator and he would influence a lot of other people. So Luke went to a lot of work to uh, give an a accurate account of the eyewitnesses of Jesus. Because of that, uh, he was not an eyewitness. So anyway, I don't want to get into Go look at Bible info if you want to understand the Bible. Okay, so hey, we did a lot here and I can't wait to hear your comments. 
We learn from one another. I am just looking at what I can look at. Maybe you've seen something else, and I would, we need to learn from one another. It talks about that. In the body of Christ, you teach one another. Each of you bringing a teaching, a didache. Each of you encouraging one another. Each of you, uh, neurotho is each of you admonishing, that's correcting and improving, encouraging, exhorting uh, one another. So we need to do that. That's how we get closer and closer to the maturity of Christ. That's Ephesians 4, by the way. The body of Christ are the ministers. There are no, the, the facilitators, I'm just coaching and facilitating right now. I'm, I'm starting the conversation. Uh, we are not the ministers. It says the body of Christ. All the people in the body of Christ are the ones who are the ministers. So somehow we got pastor and minister all mixed up because actually everybody in the body of Christ is the minister. So go look at my link on leadership, coaches and facilitators, teachers. There's different links there. And you'll see this. Uh, you know, religion creates special people. Not the New Testament. Religion creates. The religion that came after the New Testament created special people. You know, offices, titles, positions. Jesus said not to have any offices, titles, or positions. And all the words for teacher and leader are all verbal nouns and stresses the functionality, the function of that part of the body. They're just functions. And we're all taking turns functioning. You know that. We're all taking turns. The Holy Spirit gives you in that very moment the need to be teaching. That very moment giving you the need to be an administrator, administrating. Right? It's, it's just the short, shorthand for saying the ones who are administrating. The focus is on the verb, not the position or title. We get all mixed up. If you don't understand Greek, and you read your English Bibles, a lot is lost in translation. Oh my goodness gracious. So go look at that. Um, Bible Info will tell you about that. Okay, we finished up on this. Let's go to part five because there's more insights that uh, have been given to me and others that I've collected. So we'll go on to the next part. See you then. Bye-bye.